Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my Subaru as we journey through Psalm 23. And I want to just go back to the beginning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me on paths of righteousness. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And then he says this line, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As we know, David was a shepherd as a boy, and he understood uh, exactly um, how important the rod and the staff were for anyone who was a shepherd. It was the tool that you had to have to be an effective shepherd. Let me talk about the rod. The rod, uh, a little bit of debate about what the rod was used for. Uh, most scholars think that it was about a, a two-foot stick that had a, a chunk on the end of one side that was about the size of a fist. And some people say that this was only used in defense of the sheep. It was used to fend off uh, predators, animals that might want to take the sheep. And we know that David uh, explained this when he was before King Saul, ready to uh, fight the giant Goliath. And he told King Saul that as a shepherd boy that he would fight off a lion or even a bear. And so most likely he would have used this rod to throw it at the animal that was uh, intending to harm the sheep. But then there's also a lot of people that uh, talk about the rod being used um, for a wandering sheep. And so, for example, if a sheep continued to wander off and to get lost, that a good shepherd would take that rod and actually break the leg of one of the sheep, uh, of the sheep that was wandering off. And then he would take that sheep and carry it around his shoulders until that sheep's leg was mended and healed. And that sheep would never wander off again. Now, either one could be true and accurate. Here's what we do know is that the Lord disciplines those whom he loves. Listen to what it says in uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. The Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastises every son whom he receives. In another psalm he says, blessed is the one that the Lord disciplines and teaches his law. And then even in another psalm it says, the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son, he delights in. You know, for a long time as a follower of Jesus, I really struggled with the discipline of the Lord. And you might too. And, and for me, I, I, I realized that I mainly struggled with God's discipline because of the way I was disciplined by my human father. Um, it wasn't always effective and it wasn't always healthy. When I became a father, I did a lot of research and a lot of reading about disciplining kids. And this might be controversial for some of you, um, but go ahead and call CPS on me. Uh, but I spanked my kids. Um, but I did it in a very specific way. I always made sure that I was not angry and uh, not overly aggressive. Um, my oldest son, I'll use him because he's the one by far that got the most spanks. Um, I would put him on my lap and I would explain that this is what you did wrong and why it was wrong. And then I would tell him, I'm going to spank you. And, and then I would hug him. And from a young boy, and, and because he was the oldest, he got the most spanks. Uh, I think the other ones learned. Uh, and and uh, as in, in his example, but uh, it became this thing where, I mean, as soon as I spanked him, he would sit up and turn and hug me. <laughs> and I found that so strange from my upbringing, because when I was disciplined as a kid, I wanted nothing to do with my 
earthly father. I didn't want to be near him. He was the one that inflicted pain and discomfort on me. And so what we have to understand is that the Bible emphasizes that God disciplines us because he loves us. The opposite of love is not hate and is not discipline. The opposite of love is indifference. And because God loves us so much, because God is so concerned and cares for us so much, he will inflict or allow discomfort in our lives as a form of discipline. And discipline is always a good thing. You know, there's another way to look at discipline. It's not just punishment, but sometimes discipline is, is a way of uh, developing character in us, developing growth. Uh, because I was in athletics for a long time and I've coached many seasons, a good coach understands how important it is to discipline his team. And that discipline comes in the form of, of running liners, of doing push-ups, of, uh, of doing things that cause pain in the athletes. But it is a way of preparing them. It is a way of growing them. It is a way of strengthening them. And it is a way of building character in them. And so discipline, it is an act of love by our Heavenly Father. And so whether the rod was used to defend off enemies of the sheep or to discipline the sheep, uh, both could be accurate and true. But most certainly both are true in the scriptures. And so I just want to encourage you today to not be afraid or fearful of the discipline of your Heavenly Father. He will only ever discipline you in love and let me let me be clear about this because God's discipline is never in the form of shaming you embarrassing you humiliating you that is never how God disciplines I felt disciplined by God yesterday um, I was listening to a podcast and I was thinking about how I'm spending my time during the sheltering in, how I'm parenting my boys who are all at home with me right now. And I just felt a deep conviction. Uh, I actually began to tear up and I began to uh, feel this conviction in my heart and this contrition about how I was shepherding my family. And, and so, I didn't feel ashamed. I, I didn't feel um, afraid of God. I didn't want to run from God, but I actually wanted to run to Him and feel His love and His forgiveness and His grace and His mercy. Uh, but it hurt and it was uncomfortable, but it was something I needed to hear from God. Um, and so, what is God doing in you? today? What is God doing in you this season? How is he trying to grow your faith? How is he trying to develop your character in this current season of life? How might be God using a rod to discipline you? Give it some thought. Invite the Holy Spirit to fill your heart and your mind with wisdom and insight as to what God is inviting you to and who is he who is he inviting you to be in this season God bless you guys and I'm praying